good morning students this is dr vel morgan meeting you in my next video as asked by many students and doctors recent updates and data in community medicine so this video will be very short so in case if you are appearing for mci screening exams or post diploma dnb entrance exams then you can watch this video at 1.5x speed if you are appearing for neat you can watch it slowly as each slide has much more to offer so in this we will see the updates first coming into the national family planning program in the national family planning program three contraceptives have been added the first one is antara the second one is chaya and the third one is a progesterone only pill for lactating mothers the first one antara A N T A R A Antara. It is an injectable contraceptive. D M P A, Depot Medroxy Progesterone Acetate. A three monthly injection. The second one is Chaya. Chaya Chaya Ella Maya. It is a non-hormonal contraceptive. It is a once a week pill. It is given once a week. It is non-hormonal Sent Croman pill. The third one is for lactating mothers because in lactating mothers. estrogen we will not give so we are giving only progesterone only pill so this program is known as mission parivar vikas mission parivar vikas mission for the family planning so you can see a poster when it was introduced in bhopal madhya pradesh you can see antara and you can see the chaya pill Next is Ayushman Bharat. It is a national health insurance scheme. By this, each family will get rupees five lakhs per family per year as insurance coverage. So, the logo is a man doing yoga. He is protected by five petals. Five petals. That is five lakhs. One, two, three, four, five. Five lakhs per family per year. So next is quaternary prevention. So you know primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. So what is quaternary? Quaternary prevention is actually there will be no disease in a common man. There will be no disease. so doctor will tell he does not have any disease but he feels there is a some illness in him so in the patient side there is some illness so the patient feels he is having some illness and he comes and he wants to do extra investigations even for a small fever and cough he wants to do mri of the whole body so this quaternary prevention is educating him to prevent over medicalization so this is the new term coined that is quaternary prevention next is triple drug regimen for eliminating filariasis so the government of india is trying to eliminate lymphatic filariasis filariasis by 2020 through new triple drug therapy that is ivermectin dgc and albendazole so you can see the filarial worm here so this is the logo for national vector borne disease control program a family is protected from a mosquito next is recent updates in rabies so who has made some updates according to these up updates after a dog bite or an animal bite we should wash immediately for 15 minutes so the time of washing is 15 minutes we should wash for 15 minutes with soap water and disinfectant and then depending on the category of the exposure we can give vaccines or immunoglobulins so you know the category of exposure category 1 2 and 3 in category 1 an animal just touches us or we are just feeding the animal 
there is no skin break in us so touching or feeding or licks on intact skin that means no exposure we need not do anything nothing then category 2 so we are having a small minor scratch or abrasion by the animal without bleeding a dog is coming using its nail it's making a small scratch in our hand or anywhere but without bleeding which is a small scratch or nibbling then we have to administer the vaccine immediately but any exposure to bats it should be treated as category 3 any exposure to bats will come under category 3 only next is in category 3 it is for single or multiple transdermal bites so in our skin if it goes into the derma then the transdermal bite which is single or multiple or a single bite anywhere in our important regions of our body like face head neck or genital area or hands it will come under category 3 that is with any bleed or contact with any broken skin from the animal licks or any exposure to bats they are they will all come under category 3 in category 3 with vaccine we have to give immunoglobulin as soon as possible so according to the new who guidelines for those persons who are not previously immunized so if you are not previously immunized against the rabies then for category 1 no pep for category 2 wound washing and immediate vaccination but immunoglobulin is not needed for category 3 wound washing vaccination and immediate immunoglobulin has to be administered so you have you are already growing a dog dog in your home so you would have already got immunized so you would have been previously previously immunized now suddenly the dog is biting you so what we have to do so no pep that is no post exposure prophylaxis in category 1 for category 2 just wound washing and vaccination so there is a clause in it if you have received complete post exposure prophylaxis within the last 3 months you need not do vaccination again then in category 3 if you are previously immunized also rabies immunoglobulin is not needed but if you are not previously immunized you need rabies immunoglobulin next is someone called sapna sapna is nothing but she is a school going child a female child she is being taken as someone who creates awareness about leprosy throughout her nearby areas by going house to house and she spreads awareness so we have the motto join sapna for a leprosy free india she is the campaign mascot for leprosy free india next coming to the rates so you know where i have taken these rates you could have had doubts so the official website is if you go we have the niti ayog in this national institution for transforming india or the ministry of health and family welfare websites will have all the authenticated information so from this only i have taken this is the recently available data so crude birth rate it is 20.4 per 1000 mid year population crude death rate is 6.4 per 1000 mid year population these are the data available till 2016 to 17 then infant mortality rate it is 34 per 1000 live births under 5 mortality rate how many children under 5 died is 43 per 1000 live births this is also 2017 data 
then maternal mortality ratio it is 130 per 1 lakh live births this is a 2016 data 130 per 1 lakh live births if you see everything will be 1000 but ratio alone that is maternal mortality ratio alone it will be for 1 lakh live births other things will be in 1000 so number of women who have had three or more antenatal checkups is 64.6 percentage women who delivered in hospitals that is institutional delivery is 78.9 percentage and then houses which had access to improved drinking water that is safe drinking water is 89.9 percentage and the proportion of low birth weight babies the proportion of low birth weight babies in India is 18.2 percentage all these data are from National Family Health Survey 2015 to 16 compilation it is National Family Health Survey 4 so next is ASHA there are some recent updates previously the educational qualification for ASHA was only 8th pass now it has been changed to 10th pass but in the village if she has if there is if there are no one who have passed uh, 10th standard it can be lower but the requirement is 10th pass minimum now so now we have one asha per thousand population recently a recommendation has been made to have two asha per thousand population that is by the high level expert group committee on universal health coverage this high level expert group committee it gave a recommendation that if there are two asha per thousand population it will be nice but now currently if they ask in the exams you can write only one asha per thousand population unless they have given according to the HLEG report you can choose only one asha when they give this HLEG report you can choose two asha per thousand population so asha this is the official website national health mission dot gov dot in here here is the change she should be a literate woman with due preference in selection to those who are qualified up to 10th standard next regarding to asha for doing her monthly activities she will get some honorarium that has been increased from that is the incentives has been increased from 1000 rupees to 2000 rupees every month see here the date october 2018 from the national health mission so existing monthly incentives has been increased from 1000 to 2000 for the asha asha is accredited social health activist next is national health policy 2017 so what were their objectives or aims were to eliminate leprosy by 2018 to eliminate Kalazar and lymphatic filariasis by 2017 to increase the public health expenditure in GDP to 2.5 percentage by 2025 it is easy by 2025 they have to increase to 2.5 percentage 2025 2.5 percentage that is how much of our total GDP is spent on health by the government. Next are some updates on TB. So now we are using fixed drug combination. Before and all we used separate tablets of isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide. Now we have combined them and we are taking it as a whole one or one tablet. One tablet will have these three or four medications. So this is known as the FDC fixed drug dose combination regimen before it was thrice weekly now it has been replaced by daily dots regimen we are taking the TB drugs daily and then in India bidaquiline has been introduced it is used for drug resistant TB after testing it is used only after drug susceptibility testing 
now we have we are using information communication and technology for patient support if you go into your google and android apps you can get the nikshai app nikshai it is for notifying monitoring and tracking the tb patients so tb is a notifiable disease so someone who is working in this tb notifiable cadres they will notify based on this app and we can monitor the tb subjects and we can track them where they are where, whether they are taking the tablets regularly and there is another thing called dots 99 dots 99 is after taking the tablet in the envelope there will be a phone number the patient who has taken the tablet he has to make call to this number after taking the tablet it ensures adherence of tb treatment next is single window delivery for tb and hiv co infection anyone who has got infected with hiv has to test for tb anyone who is infected with tb has to test for hiv then for a person living with hiv we are giving isoniazid prevention therapy therapy to prevent tb so we are giving isoniazid prevention therapy to prevent tb in hiv then there are certain changes in the definitions used for tb who is a new case of tb a new case of tb is someone who has never had treatment or took drugs only for less than one month for example today is 14th december then if you have started drugs on 16th november then he is a new case he will be included under a new case of tb then what is treatment after last two follow up so treatment after last two follow up means a case who has been previously treated for one month or more but then for more than one month he has not come for taking the drugs we are having no contact with him so for one month he has been lost to follow up means then we can tell him treatment after lost to follow up so in the tb updates there's a column for transgenders in all the forms used in tb from testing to reporting and then nikshai id columns have also been added then with the regards to names the term relapse it has been changed to recurrent relapse means coming again it has been changed to recurrent and the term default it has been changed to last to follow up default means he has left a treatment in between and he has ran away for more than one month that term it has been changed to last to follow up now according to the recent updates we will follow up per person with tb even after treatment these are the terms at which we will follow up them at the end of intensive phase at the end of continuation phase at 6 months after treatment 12 months after treatment 18 months after treatment and 24 months after treatment now with the recent guidelines no need to give treatment for mdr contacts one who has come with come in contact with mdr tb we can just wait and watch so this is the treatment guidelines we have seen it many times a new case of tb 2 hrz e plus 4 hr e 6 months totally then previously treated tb 2 hr z e s streptomycin plus 1 hr z e in the intensive phase and then 5 hr e in the continuation phase then mdr tb 6 to 9 months kill z 18 months lc xdr tb extensive drug resistant tb for 6 to 12 months we are giving 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 drugs and then for 18 months we are giving 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 drugs and there is a term which you should know totally drug resistant tb 
we have few cases of totally drug resistant TB has been found out in India. They are resistant to all the drugs available. Even the new drugs, all the drugs available, they are totally drug resistant TB. TB patients, they will get 500 rupees per month for their treatment that is given for their nutritional support through their bank accounts. The scheme is known as Nikshai Portion Yojana. Portion means it is related to nutrition. So Nikshai Portion Yojana. So according to the recent updates, there will be no extension of intensive phase of TB treatment. Before, if the sputum did not change from positive to negative at the end of intensive phase, there was extension of intensive phase. Now, according to the recent updates, there will be no extension of intensive phase, even the sputum conversion is not there. So, national strategic plan, it aims at 2025 for eliminating TB. Then the place is called dots plus sites. These dots plus sites, they are the places where a subject with TB who has MDR or XDR, that is multi drug resistant or extensive drug resistant TB, he goes there and he starts his treatment there because of the costly drugs for these TB. Then what are the incentives given to the DOTS providers? So this term DOTS providers, it has been replaced by treatment supporters. So these treatment supporters, they will get 1000 rupees if a subject with category 1 TB completes his treatment. And these treatment supporters will get 1500 rupees for category 2 and then 5000 rupees for a TB patient completing category 4 or category 5 treatment that is multi drug or extensive drug resistant TB treatment. Then the new drug bidaquilin. So it is given for what group of patients? It is given for multi drug resistant TB and only for those subjects who are aged 18 and above. So it is given to MDR TB which is resistant to all fluoroquinolones. It is also given to MDR TB with resistance to all, to all second line injectable drugs. This bidaquilin it is not given in pregnancy and in arrhythmias. It acts by targeting the mycobacterial ATP synthase. By targeting it, it reduces the culture conversion time. Then coming to the biomedical waste management rules changed in 2016 and then again some changes were made recently in 2018. So we know the four categories yellow, red, white, blue, yellow, anatomical waste, yellow that is human anatomical waste like our body parts. Next is animal anatomical waste. After we get from doing a pharmacology lab testing animal and then soiled waste like our blood, it may spill anywhere like mattress or the bed, linen or mask. It can get soiled. Then expired and discarded medicines, chemical waste, microbiology, biotechnology, clinical lab waste like growing a culture medium then uh, disposing a blood bag after transfusion and then the chemical liquid waste so everything yellow color bag next red it is mainly for recyclable contaminated waste recyclable plastics like tubes bottles catheters urine bags rubber gloves and then syringes without the needles because the waste sharps including the metals and the needles will go to white color. That is white color translucent puncture leak proof containers and then blue color a cardboard box with blue color marking usually. It is mainly for putting glassware and also 
metallic body implants so next anemia mukt bharat anemia free india they have targeted the year 2022 so it is mainly for six age groups we can see the six age groups like first a mother is pregnant then she will give rise to a child so they she will be giving milk to the child so for pregnant women lactating women then the child will grow into children then it may grow into adults and boy or adults and girl then before marriage she is a woman of reproductive age group so these are the six groups or target groups under anemia mukt bharat first pregnant women lactating women children adults and boy adults and girl then women of reproductive age so it is like a cycle so six interventions we have six target groups and then six interventions they will give iron and folic acid deworming and then behavior change communication including delayed cord clamping if we delay the cord clamping the newborn will get extra blood and testing of anemia using digital methods and point of care treatment then giving mandatory iron and folic acid fortified foods in government funded health programs in the foods they are going to add iron and folic acid and then addressing the non nutritional causes of anemia like malaria fluorosis etc these are the six interventions under anemia mukt bharat we already saw the six groups of beneficiaries what is the important changes now for pregnant women the iron and folic acid doses 60 mg of elemental iron and 500 microgram of folic acid it is given for 180 days during pregnancy and then after pregnancy also it is given for 180 days so 180 days during pregnancy also she gets 60 mg elemental iron and 500 microgram folic acid 180 days after pregnancy also she gets the same see here so daily one iron and folic acid tablet starting from the fourth month of pregnancy that is for minimum 180 days during pregnancy and then continued for 180 days postpartum so each tablet has 60 mg elemental iron plus 500 microgram folic acid it's a red color so the iron and folic acid tablet given to the pregnant mother is red color it is also sugar coated sugar coated to prevent the nausea then we have portion abhiyan portion abhiyan is nothing but it is a scheme for holistic nourishment for promoting the nutrition mainly through using various technologies and converging the various data from all different programs so the key themes for the rashtriya poshan ma are antenatal care optimal breastfeeding then after breastfeeding we have to give the babies complementary feeding then we have to prevent anemia by anemia mukt bharat then we have to monitor the child of the monitor the growth of the child then we have to give education to the child we have to give proper diet for the girl child and under right marriage we have to marry because earlier marriage earlier childbirth anemia and then maintain hygiene and sanitation at home and then fortification of food with iron folic acid and other nutrients here you can also see other logos this is a logo of panchayat raj this is fssai food safety security authority of india this is swachh bharat next is mental health care act 2017 so according the main provisions of the act are we have to restrict the use of electroconvulsive therapy that is the shock therapy they will still know we have to restrict it 
and the patients who are mentally affected and then decriminalization of suicide so suicide is not now punishable and we know the immunization schedule we discussed in the last video at birth bcg birth dose opv zero dose and hepatitis b birth dose at 6 weeks 10 weeks and 14 weeks pentavalent rotavirus and oral polio virus 1 2 and 3 at 6 weeks pcv1 at 14 weeks pcv2 at 6 weeks ipv1 at 14 weeks ipv2 this is intradermal then 9 months mr measles rubella vitamin a japanese encephalitis live vaccine first dose and then pcv booster pneumococcal conjugate vaccine then at 16 to 24 months dpt first booster opv booster second dose of mr then second dose of japanese encephalitis at 5 to 6 years dpt second booster then at 10 years and 16 years td vaccine so this tetanus diphtheria vaccine has replaced the tt vaccine slowly by 2020 everywhere all over the country it will replace wholly now it has been introduced slowly in states pregnant woman two dose of td at least one month apart only one dose if they have received the two td doses in the last pregnancy which has occurred within three years that is now if it is 2018 if she has been pregnant from 2015 to 18 then one td dose is enough before 2015 she has to have two td doses then rotavirus vaccine pneumococcal conjugate vaccine japanese encephalitis and measles rubella they are given in they are being given only in selected states so vitamin a totally nine doses first dose at ninth month then every six months between one to five years will give doses so there will be eight doses so eight plus one dose at ninth month totally nine doses next common cancers there is a small change according to the statistics from globocon 2018 so now lip and oral cavity is the most commonest among males before it was lung now it is lip and oral cavity in females in India, breast cancer is the most commonest, then only cervical cancer. So if you take overall, breast cancer is the overall most common cancer which is most commonly incident in India in 2018. Thank you.